Today we're looking at a study by our muscle heroes, Brett Schoenfeld, Brett Contreras, and colleagues. Ten trained men participated in the study. These were decently strong fellas looking at their average one rep max of close to 300 pounds in Romanian deadlift. In all the subjects, electrodes that measure muscle activity were attached to four different locations of the skin above the hamstrings. The technical term for this is electromyography, or EMG. The locations corresponded to the upper and lower parts of the inner and outer hamstring muscles. Next, the 10 men performed their 8 rep maxes for the lying leg curl, which is a knee dominant exercise, and the Romanian deadlift, which is a hip dominant exercise. The results were intriguing. There was actually no significant difference in the muscle activation of the upper parts of the hamstrings. However, the lying leg curls activated the lower parts up to 175% more. In the lying leg curls, the outer part of the lower hamstrings probably showed more activation because the short head of the biceps femoris, which flexes the knee, can help out in this exercise, but not in the remaining deadlift. So it added to the EMG signal only in the lying leg curls. However, the inner part of the lower hamstring muscle, where no signal from the short head of the biceps femoris can be picked up, also showed a significant 66% higher activity in the lying leg curls. This means that the part of the lower hamstrings muscle that's closest to the knee actually gets activated more during the knee dominant lying leg curl. All in all, we can take away from the study that a variety of hamstring exercises, both knee and hip dominant, is probably needed for maximal hamstrings development. Thank you for listening to this Bayesian 101. I'll see you next time.